This mystical dream or vision of St. John Bosco occurred when he was a young priest, before prophetic dreams were a regularity in his life, for he received over 150 before he died. This vision was before the oratory was well established in Turin. In fact, it was a time of great insecurity, because he wasn't sure if keeping up the apostolate with these boys was even feasible. He was very poor and lacked funds and space for the 200 some odd boys he was helping at the time. It all seemed impossible, till this vision put new wind in his sails and assured him of his providential mission. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don Bosco wrote in his memoirs, On the second Sunday of that year, 1844, I was to tell my boys that the oratory was being transferred to the Valdoco area. I was, however, very worried because I was uncertain about the exact location, the means, and the people to help me. On Saturday night, I went to bed feeling uneasy, but that night I had a new dream which seemed to be a sequel to the one I had at Becky when about nine years old. I think it best to put it down literally. I dreamed that I was in the midst of a multitude of wolves, goats, kids, lambs, sheep, dogs, birds, and rams. The whole menagerie raised an uproar, a racket that would have frightened even the bravest man. I wanted to run away when a lady dressed as a shepherdess beckoned me to follow her and accompany the strange flock she was leading. We wandered aimlessly, making three stops along the way, at each of which many of those animals changed into lambs, so that the number of lambs continually increased. After a long trek, I found I was in a meadow where those animals were grazing and frolicking, making no attempt to bite each other. I was exhausted and wanted to sit by the roadside, but the shepherdess invited me to keep walking. A short distance away, I came upon a large playground surrounded by porticos with a church at one end. Here I noticed that four-fifths of those animals had become lambs. Their number was now very large. At that moment, many young shepherds came to watch over them, but they remained only a short time and walked off. Then a marvelous thing happened. Many lambs turned into shepherds, and they, in increasing numbers, took care of the flock. When the shepherds became too many, they parted and went elsewhere to herd other strange animals into pens. I wanted to leave because I thought it was time for me to say mass, but the shepherdess asked me to look to the south. On doing so, I saw a field in which potatoes, cabbage, beets, lettuce, and many other vegetables had been planted. Look again, she said. I did so and beheld a monumental church. In the choir loft, I saw choristers and musicians who seemed to be inviting me to sing mass. On a white streamer inside the church, there was emblazoned in large letters, Eek Domus Mea, Inde Gloria Mea. Here is my house, and hence my glory will come forth. Still dreaming, I asked the shepherdess where I was, and the meaning of all this walking, the stops, the house, the church, and then another church. You will understand everything, she said, when, with your bodily eyes, you will behold all that you now see in your mind. I thought I was awake, and so I said, I see clearly, and with my bodily eyes. I know where I'm going and what I'm doing. Just then, the bell of St. Francis of Assisi Church rang the Ave Maria, and I awoke. The dream lasted nearly the whole night, and there were many other details. At the time, I understood little of it, because, distrusting myself, I put little faith in it. As things gradually began to take shape, I began to understand. In fact, later on, this dream, together with another, formed the basis of my planning while at the refugio. In the early afternoon of the third Sunday of October, the Feast of the Purity of Mary, a swarm of boys of various ages and conditions came running down to Valdoco in search of Don Bosco and the new oratory. Where's Don Bosco? Where's the oratory? Don Bosco? It was an invasion. Hearing all this shouting and commotion, the neighborhood people came out of their homes somewhat alarmed, fearing that the boys had come with some evil intent. 
None of them had as yet heard of Don Bosco or his festive oratory, so they shouted right back, Who cares about Don Bosco? What oratory? Go away, you rascals! Thinking that the people were making fun of them, the boys shouted even louder in their quest, and the neighborhood people took it in bad part and threatened to beat them. Things were beginning to take a bad turn when Don Bosco, aroused by the clamor, realized that it was his young friends looking for him and the new oratory. He could hear them repeating, He told us to come here. Who knows where he lives? Then a boy pointed to a doorway and in a loud voice shouted, Don Bosco lives there. Follow me. At that moment, Don Bosco came out of the house. His appearance was greeted with a roar. Oh, Don Bosco, where is the oratory? We're all here. Everybody ran to him and all arguments ceased. As the clamor died down, the people's anger changed to amazement. Staring, they asked themselves who this priest could be, who these boys were, and so on. When the boys inquired about the oratory's whereabouts, Don Bosco told them that the real oratory was not yet ready, that meanwhile they were to come to his room, which was large enough to accommodate them. The boys then swarmed up the stairs, each one trying to be the first to enter Don Bosco's room. They sat on the bed, on the floor, on the desk, and even the windowsill. Don Bosco looked on amused as they turned his entire room topsy-turvy, and he only asked them to be careful not to break or damage anything. But charity is patient, as it says in Corinthians. They were all tightly jammed in Don Bosco's quarters and adjacent rooms, and there were only two confessors for about 200 boys, packed as tight as sardines in a can. We can't go on like this, said Father Burrell on that occasion. We must find a more suitable place. Which, as you would know if you've been following this YouTube channel, Divine Providence did supply him with not just a massive oratory, but an incredible church dedicated to Our Lady Hub of Christians. But it would take much effort on his part and many years striving for sustainability. Nothing was ever settled, and he had to beg for alms constantly. If you'd like to hear about the miracles that occurred for those who contributed to his work, just click on the link above me here. God bless you, and Our Lady keep you.